Warning, MF Uncensored contains adult language and discussion. Listener discretion is advised. We're a couple of misfits. We're a couple of misfits. What's the matter with misfits? That's where we fit in. We're not that being dilly. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to MF Uncensored. Don't forget, if you guys are listening to us on the go, you can find us on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, basically anywhere you can listen to a podcast, you'll find us there. You can also find more of our content on our website, themisfitfaction.com. There you'll find links to not only this show, but our other shows like the Multiverse Fancast and Cinematic Adventures as well. You can also find links to our store where we have new merch all the time. Our, you can also find our reviews, our articles, links to our, some of our other friends. So make sure you guys check that out. Again, that's the Misfit Faction. Dot com. And also, don't forget, if you guys are looking to start your very own podcast, maybe you guys have been listening to us for the last couple of months, maybe you guys have always wanted to and you just don't know how to get going with it, make sure you guys go to podbean.com slash Misfit Faction. If you guys do that, you'll get a month of free podcasting as a thank you from us to our loyal listeners. And also, if you guys are looking to start your own show, reach out to us. Let us know. We always are looking for new shows to join the network. We're always looking for new people to talk to and interview and do shows with, so make sure you guys reach out. Or maybe you guys have an online business or service that you guys offer. Advertising is a big part of any sort of business venture. So if you guys go to sponsorship.podbean.com slash Misfit Faction, you guys get $100 worth of free advertising. Again, as a thank you from us to you guys. And now that the boring stuff's out of the way, I know, right? Oh, that's Rob. Rob, how are you? Ah, oh, it's my turn. Hi. Oh, Rob, are you tired? I was sleeping through Oh, that. well, then you know what would really be good for you? A nice raise energy. If you guys go to repsports.com <laughs> and enter the code MISFIT89 at checkout, you guys will get a discount on anything that you order. And it's not just energy drinks. It's also protein supplements, shirts, swag, all sorts of stuff. And we did not plan that segue. But no, that was, that was clever, though. I, I like that a yeah, lot. Yeah, I did it last night. Or the last episode I did it at the very end because it was just a pure topical discussion with producer Melanie. But since you were snoring, I figured I'd segue <laughs> right into it. So that's Rep Sports, R E P P Sports dot com. And I'm Rob and I'm here and I'm happy to be here. Thanks for inviting me to this MF Uncensored podcast. I mean, you just kind of showed up. Mm, and you you know, said you were bored and had some free time. I literally was playing PlayStation all day. I was doing all right. <laughs> What's now, what game are you playing? Dragon Ball Z. Oh, yeah. yeah. Is, did Z. that just come out? No, it's been out since 2000. I go through all these phases where I will go back to a game that I've yeah. played a trillion times. Like, came out in 2016, and they're still adding stuff to it. Okay. So, it's uh, every day's a new adventure. See, Paul's the gamer in this duo here. I know nothing about gaming except for what my 14-year-old tells me. And even then, I try and, you know, I, I he, he has a, what's, a Switch, and he has, uh, oh, what's what's the one where they fight each other? The Oh, Bro- Super Smash Brothers? Super Smash, that's yeah. it. He has that, and so he's like, Dad, play me in Super Smash Brothers. And I don't know what any of the controls are. It's a lot of body mashing. Right. So I do. I just take it and I just keep pressing all the buttons until something happens. See, I would just smack Timmy every once in a while. So he <laughs> messes up. So, but that's just me. But uh, yeah, it, no, I know nothing about You're the gamer here. So you, you know how to spell Atari, right? I still have my Atari 2600. Oh my God, it's, probably, it's probably worth money. Yeah. If it I, and still I, works. I think I have about 40 games for it too. That's crazy. Yeah. Is E.T. the extraterrestrial? Oh, one who of them? doesn't have E.T. the extraterrestrial? Apparently a dump in New Jersey had most of I them. Know. That was but, still one of my, my favorite things in the whole world. I love a good conspiracy theory. Nothing. You, you know then, what? They actually, if you go into YouTube, there's actually a documentary made about that. They oh, go it's and, awesome. Yeah, yeah. They go and like, find out the truth about how much was dumped into the landfill. And it, there is some truth to that too. Oh, it's, there is some truth to it, yeah. which is even funnier because like that was a big game and conspiracy for a long yeah. time and that's I love a good, like I said I love a good conspiracy theory there's so many and they're they're all about everything yeah. like it used to be just like government conspiracy theory what was the there was a movie with Mel Gibson called Conspiracy, conspiracy Theory Conspiracy Theory where he got triggered by Catcher in the Rye yep. I remember that yep. but nowadays there's cons- conspiracy theories for everything there's like a, a secret video game cabinet from like an arcade like you can, you can look all these up there's there's some really uh, good ones the big popular conspiracy theory in our house is that birds are actually government spies and they charge on the wires Oh, I wouldn't be surprised. Which is why when we were in Arizona, there were no wires, and so therefore, no, no birds. birds. Weirdest thing. Mm. So strange. <laughs> well, I mean, like, the government's used pigeons and stuff like that, like the carrier pigeons, and yeah. I think they tried to use dolphins at one point. Oh, like, I'm sure they used every animal to try. Every. <laughs> Imagine, like, that's your government job. The animal trainer. Which one? I have the beetles. Oh. <laughs> 
the guy who does like the lines is like the coolest guy at the office. It's like high school but weirder. <laughs> I'd write that show. I think that'd be a great show to yeah, watch. Yeah, that'd be a good show. Yeah, but uh, so this week we're we're doing something of a theme. Now this was an idea that we we've been throwing around mm-hmm. for a while, and it it started off kind of piggybacking off Fan Feedback Friday. If you guys don't know Fan Feedback Friday, it's on our Facebook pages. You can you know look us up on Facebook. There, we have a group and everything. But on the Multiverse Fancast and Cinematic Adventures, every Friday we try and do some sort of Fan Feedback Friday, and usually it's it's subjective to the page that it's on. Multiverse Fancast tends to be superhero related. Cinematic Adventures tends to be movie or TV related. And we wanted something for MF Uncensored, but we didn't want to just stick to Facebook. We kind of wanted to do something a little bit different. And we we were playing around with a, what have you done this month kind of yeah. theme. Like what are some things that – like some good things. So we may still do that themed episode, but we also have this one where it's more of a what What do you watch? What are you doing theme? Yeah, it's, like it's, what have you been up to? Yeah, it, I, I figured we would break it into three categories. What are you watching? Which covers movies and television. Oh, that's it's still four categories. <laughs> Don't let him. So what are you watching? What are you reading? And what are you drinking? Mm-hmm. So we will go through all three of those things and we'll save the drinking one for the end. So you, it's to stick around if you want to hear. So that's, that's the uncensored part of the show. Yes, yeah, so you're very, very, <laughs> very risque right now. Woo-hoo. All right. So let's. we're going to have Rob go first because I right. can't even remember the last movie. That, so the first category is movies. What is the last movie that you watched? All right. I, I actually, during the summer, I, you know, I should say that. This summer, I have not been watching many movies. I've been watching a lot more TV. And that's why you're not on um, Cinematic Adventures. I know, clearly. Yeah. And and because usually I keep track of the movies that I watch. And so far this year, it, like starting, it was like around June 15th, I had watched almost 100 movies in this year so far. <sighs> And then I stopped and I've watched about four movies since. I've been watching a lot of television now. But I'll talk about some of the movies. So the first movie, it was a movie I watched just last night. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Mm -hmm. You haven't seen it yet? I have not. I I know what it's about and I know the general consensus and all that stuff. Yeah. So for those who who don't, and oh, and we should say that I think... We haven't talked about this, but I think we can agree. This is going to be a mostly spoiler-free MF Uncensored, especially yeah, 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 if we're yeah, giving yeah. recommendations. Mm-hmm. This is a movie I would highly recommend. Without giving away too much, she is. It stars Michelle Yao. Mm-hmm. She is an aging Chinese immigrant. She is in an unhappy marriage. She owns a laundromat, and it's a lot about all of her dreams that she that never really came together for her in life. She has a daughter that she's kind of disappointed in. She has an aging father that she's trying to take care of. And she's just, she's very disappointed with where she's at in life. And then all of a sudden, one day, her husband kind of blinks crazily and he is another person from a different multiverse and telling her she's the only person that can save the entire multiverse from this big threat that's coming. And of course, she doesn't believe it. But then it goes crazy multiverse. Like it's one of the best multi... All right, I got to say it. It's better than Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Yeah, Doctor Strange. It is not. It is not aged well. I um, gotta rewatch it because I now that I know what I'm getting into, I gotta see if I still like it as much as I, think I used to. If it to. came out during like Phase One, it would have blown us all away. Yeah, but this one, this is the multiverse movie that you're missing out on that you really gotta see because it it's broken up into three parts. The first part is everything. Second part is everywhere, and the third part is all at once, mm-hmm. and it goes. It, it is crazy visuals. It is just jumping all over the place. It is, you, you feel psychotic when you're watching it. It's a long movie too. It's almost two and a half hours. Oh, it covers um, a whole multiverse. Yeah. And it's got amazing fight sequences. Oh, good. Yeah. I've, I've heard very good things about it. It's the first, uh, first movie from that company that broke a hundred million dollars. A24. Yeah. Yeah. Which the, is awesome. Like, cause it's, that's a, for those guys who don't know, it's more of an indie company. It's not yes. a big name studio or anything like that. And indie movies tend to, They'll usually make their budget back and right. stuff. They're not going to do like huge, and they're going to have small budgets. Like, uh, look at, I think one of the few exceptions is Paranormal Activity. Yes, which was that's a high ranking, high high grossing, made for like seven million dollars yeah. or something, even less. I think like something stupid, and yeah. they made like almost a billion dollars and yeah. turned it into Blair a huge Witch franchise. Blair Witch was like that. Blair Witch was another one. That anniversary is coming up soon, I think. Oh wow! Yeah, something like thirty ish years. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, 30, I, I 35 remember five years. Did you ever see the sequel to it? I didn't bother. It is rough. Yeah. Well, no. So, so they made two sequels. The second is called Blair Witch Book of the Damned or something like that. <laughs> and – or Book of Shadows. Book of Shadows. Oh, and right. And it, it is bad. Yeah. Like it is atrociously bad and just – like because it's one of those movies where it, it tried to do everything the sequel didn't yeah. or like the original didn't. Like it wasn't a found footage type thing. Like they do have a found footage scene but like 
it, it is rough. And then they made the third one, which is just called, I think, Blair Witch. Okay. And that came out a few years ago, is which that I, like I a heard soft reboot or something. Not a soft. I don't know if it's a soft reboot. I think it's a like a a requel almost. Okay. Kind of like uh, uh, Ghost Rider, oh, where yeah, the second yeah, yeah. one kind of was like mm-hmm. a sequel, but it really wasn't. Very strange. But I, I would highly recommend this. It is. Like, it's one of those movies where every, this is everything everywhere all at once. It's one of those movies where you don't know, you can't possibly anticipate what's going to happen one second to the next. Mm-hmm. It It is so frantic and, and and crazy, and it's brilliantly shot. It's incredible costumes, amazing effects, but on a really low budget. So high high recommendation for me on that one. And I think we're probably we may even try and cover that out on a podcast one day. Eventually, too. especially yeah. on a show called the Multiverse Fancast. Yeah, I guess we have to. Mm-hmm. What's something you're watching. Uh the last movie I watched, and this is gonna be such a weird choice, Sonic the Hedgehog Two. How was that? I, I think those movies are actually very good. Yeah. Like not not like good, good, like they deserve the Oscar. Oh, right. But they are they're such love letters to the franchise and I saw the first one like when it first came out and I I didn't watch it since but I hadn't seen the second one. I think we just didn't get a chance to go see it in theaters and I really wanted to cuz you know it's Idris Elba as, as Knuckles but you can't go <laughs> Is wrong. He really? Yeah, oh, it's it's fantastic see, too. Now, I did not grow up in the Sonic era. I, I think did. You did. Oh, right? I definitely did. Yeah. I was I had the Sega Genesis. I had all the Sonic games. I don't think I actually ever beat us cuz games used to be hard. Yeah. Like really hard. Like I don't know if you're familiar with the Lion King video game. No. They made the Lion King video game so intentionally hard mm. that kids would have to keep renting it. So they could beat it. Oh wow! That was the, the that was the corporate that, mentality. That was a you just flashed me back to the point where we used to rent our video games. Yeah, too. yeah sorry about that. that. Yeah, we'll Blockbuster. Talk about that later. But and for you New Jersey people, Palmer Video, if you remember that at all, Hollywood Video, if you're from uh, oh yeah from Maypac. But so growing up, I was a huge Sonic fan. I loved Sonic. And I remember having the Genesis. I don't think, like I said, I don't think I ever actually beat the game, but like that was when video games were designed to be harder. The Lion King video game was so hard that I think I only beat it once and I owned it. (laughs) But uh, that was also a time you couldn't look up, you couldn't look up strategy guides and cheat codes and all these things. Like if you, if you wanted to cheat at a video game, you had to get the Game Genie or the Game Shark, which was like a separate (laughs) attachment that you put into the game. Oh, and then you plug the game into that? Yeah. Oh, so okay. Sonic and Knuckles came out, and Sonic and Knuckles was built like that, where it's a, it's got a port to the top of it. So you'd put that in, and then you you could put a Sonic game in there and play as Knuckles in that game. It was like the first, like, it's almost like a DLC pack nowadays, because mm-hmm. nowadays you get a game, and it's not, it feels like it's not done. Like, there's always, they're always like, oh, here's the next DLC, $14.99. Oh, it took me a minute to remember what DLC is. Downloadable, Downloadable content. content. Yeah. Right. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> it's like buying another Nintendo game. <laughs> you got to talk to me like I'm an idiot with these things. But it was really cool. You you could play Sonic and Knuckles, the video game. Yeah. Or if you put like Sonic 2 on top of it, you would play Sonic 2, but you can play as Knuckles. Okay. Because it, it, Knuckles came out much later. And he's one of those fan favorite characters. Like, yeah, everybody loves Knuckles. Yeah. But Jim Carrey, man. Jim Carrey yeah. kills it. He is just having so much fun. And it, it makes me sad for, like, we talked about Kick-Ass 2, and right. uh, he was a huge highlight, only in it for, like, five minutes. but And then he hated the movie afterward. Yeah. Well, no, he didn't well, hate he, the movie. He, he hated the glorified violence, yeah. which, cool, at the time, especially, with what was going on. We get it. But I, I want more Jim Carrey just being Jim Carrey. I just read an article the other day that talked about that we need a Jim Carrey renaissance, and he needs to bring... Because it was in light of Maverick mm-hmm. that he needs to bring back a character because we need to feel that sort of like refreshed optimism that we You know we who I want? Have. I want him to bring back the mask. That was in there. Yeah, yeah, they said the mask would be a great one. They said Ace Ventura would be another one. I don't think Ace Ventura would because yeah. I feel like it would just be Dumb and Dumber, the sequel <laughs> yeah. again, which was all right. But like it was the exact same movie as the first one. And that, you know, we grew up in the in the interim. Yeah. It, you know, you watch the first Dumb and Dumber and you, you're laughing because you're like a fi- the po- like the laxative scene. Oh, my gosh. Like, it's it, still a great meme. Oh, it's still hilarious. But like we watched the sequel and like we're now in our 20s or 30s or whatever it was at the time. And we're like, huh. we're like, he's going to break a hip. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, they look so old. Yeah. But I would love to see what happened to Stanley Ipkiss yeah. from, and see the mask. Because also, if you do Ace Ventura, he's got to be goofy the whole time. The Mask is one of those movies where it was a nice balance of Jim Carrey isms, where like when he's the mask, he's like you know the mask, he's funny, and also it would help with all the de aging and prosthetics that they would have to do because right. he he's another one who's he's aged. It happens. Yeah. 
But I would love. We, we were hoping for the Brendan Fraser Renaissance. That looked like it was on the horizon. There is. It's still coming. There is. He's got a movie coming out called The, the Whale. Whale. Yeah, yeah. But he, he was might... supposed to be in Batgirl, which just got canceled. Yeah. He was supposed to play Firefly. He's another actor that I, I feel like got such a raw deal, and he was like such a a Hollywood action hero, yeah. heartthrobby kind of guy. Like he's still he's doing well with Doom Patrol. Yeah. He's doing. Good I gotta. Stuff I gotta there. watch this. I still haven't seen the second oh, really? season. Yeah, and the third season's coming out soon. No, I think third season came out. Fourth season's coming out. So. Oh god, I can't keep track <laughs> yeah. anymore. I gotta. I gotta get back on it because they uh, they just introduced Danny the Street in uh, Young Justice of all places. Oh really? And he's not Danny the Street yet. It's yeah. kind of like how he becomes Danny the Street. Danny the Street's a big part in Doom Patrol. Yeah. Oh, I love Danny the Street. It's fun. One of the best scenes, and this is where it gets weird. If you guys haven't seen Doom Patrol, there's a scene where and. This isn't going to sell the show, or maybe it will. <laughs> There's a scene where they're on Danny the Street, who is a character, like a mm-hmm. sentient sidewalk, basically, because comics are weird, man. Mm-hmm. And all of the characters start experiencing intense sexual arousal. Yeah. And Brendan Fraser's playing a character named Robot Man, who does not have any of that. And they're all like experiencing it and then they all stop and he's like, Yeah, because he wants to be part of it. It's the funny. I like when it's- Danny the Street goes all pride parade on them. Yeah, there's some there's some very interesting, very yeah. that show is wild. If you guys are like shows like The Boys or stuff like that, Doom Patrol is really where it so, started almost. Now, real quick on Sonic, I always kind of look down on James Marsden for being in that. Should I? No, he's he's not in it as much. He's not in as, the first one. He was in a lot of. Okay, I never saw it either. I also always respected the first one for listening to the fans mm-hmm. and doing that the redesign. Right. Did you hear that Ugly Sonic is in Chip and Dale? Chip and Dale. It's the funniest thing. We did an episode on Chip and Dale and. Having ugly Sonic as a character was one of the best things ever. <laughs> but, oh, God, it is atrocious looking. Mm. But uh, I, I, he's not really in the second one as much. It's more of a focus on Sonic and Tails because okay. Tails gets introduced in this. And they're, they're, like, their bromance is hard, and it's is like Tails awesome. Tails is a boy or a girl? Tails is a boy. Oh, actually, I should first ask, is there gender in the Sonic yes. world? Okay. Tails Tail specifically says that he is a boy okay. more than once. Sonic 2 and, I think, and Knuckles 2. But Knuckles with Idris Elba's voice? Hard, yeah. hard to determine, I guess. All right, so recommend uh, Sonic too. Yeah, if you if you guys like Sonic, if you enjoy, if you want a video game movie that's not bad, that that's a good way to. <laughs> and that's that's unfortunately because that is the bar for video game movies. Yeah. That's not bad. Like mm-hmm. Mortal Kombat was not bad. Okay. Like we enjoyed Mortal Kombat when it came out, and especially because they they went their full R rating with Mortal Kombat. I don't know if you're familiar with Mortal Kombat, Rob, but uh, I remember the old ones. I didn't see the new one. It looked like it was shot and designed well. They did fatalities in this. Like yeah. they people died like viciously. I, I love that. I admire that. Rob likes that people die viciously and in, outrageously. In a, no, in a Mortal Kombat movie. Oh, okay. I wasn't <laughs> sure cuz that was going to be the next t-shirt. Speaking of, brings me to my next movie. You probably haven't not many of you have probably heard about this one. It's called On the Count of 3. And it's about two guys that make a suicide pact. Well, this is getting really fun. <laughs> and it's a comedy. I can tell. Drama. And it stars, what's his name? Chris Abbott and Jared Carmichael. And it is, it came out this year. It's, oh, Tiffany Haddish is also in oh, it too. Her. It is an extremely thoughtful, interesting, sometimes funny, but of course, dark comedy. And it is. It is tough at times to sit through, but I really like, I I got a lot out of the movie. It came out this year. It was one of the better films that came out this year, and Mm. it's definitely worth a watch. But know that you are going to watch a suicide movie where they do these two people. Well, the the movie starts off with the two of them pointing a gun at each other's head and saying, okay, on the count of three. Oh, I'd, I'd, (laughs) I'd, I'd wimp out. And then, like... It takes you a little bit back to that before they got to that point. It's just about how depressed they are, how one of them broke out of his mental hospital, oh. how they're both very suicidal. And they say, all right, we're going to do this. And then about 10 minutes later, they get to that point. But then one of them ducks and the other one doesn't shoot. And they're like, OK, wait, 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 wait. Before we do this, we should really in knowing that we're going to end our lives. Let's give ourselves one more day. Okay, And then they take themselves through that whole day of all the choices they make, of all the people they talk to, some of the things that they're able to wrap up in their lives. And it's really like there are some funny moments, but there are some grim moments, too. Well, and, and it doesn't end. It ends in an interesting way, too. It's not a hopeful ending either. Lovely. Well, I should say it's not hopeful for everybody, but there is for one of them. Well, it's funny you say that because now I remember the second movie. Okay, go ahead. That. So this is a movie that 
Sean and I from Cinematic Adventures we saw years ago. Okay. All right, we we went. Now, actually, we should say also that neither of us know what things were each of us are going to say because we didn't share our lists at all with each other. So you're this lucky. is all new to me. You're, so lucky, go ahead. you're lucky. I thought of anything, <laughs> but we actually went to a theater maybe like 40 minutes away mm-hmm. to go see this movie. I don't know why Sean wanted to go see this movie. I don't know what it was about it, but it's also a very dark comedy, very mm-hmm. cynical, very, very not PC and does not fly very well nowadays, but still it's like a great movie. It's called In Bruges. I have seen that years ago, but it is, it's been a while. Go ahead. It is one of our favorite movies of all yeah. time. And I don't know if it was like going to see it. It's the same theater we saw uh, Fanboys in. And it's <laughs> got Colin Farrell, Ray Fiennes, and then... Uh, Brendan Gleeson. Yes. I love Brendan Gleeson. I do He's, too. He did like a streak of sort of those dark comedy movies in Th- that This time movie period. is very... And this was one of them, yeah. It's about two hitmen that get sent to Bruges to hide out after a bad job. Yeah. And Colin Farrell is just miserable. He is just... <laughs> and he's... He's so anti-PC. And colorful in his language. Oh, my God. The language in this movie alone. And it it has some of the best quotes in it. There's a scene where he – a lady attacks him with a bottle, and he yells out, A bottle! From, like, a scene that happened earlier, and he punches her in the face. (laughs) And, well, we don't condone that sort of – but there's, like, a reason to it and all that. And, like, Sean and I will just randomly yell out, Bottle! (laughs) So this this was directed by Martin McDonough, which I think you know what I'm going to go so far as to say is he is a fan of the show because I've met him. Oh, and uh, yes, I met him years ago at Jacob Burns Film Center in Pleasantville. I think that's uh, where we went to go see it. Oh, maybe, maybe that, yeah. yeah. Maybe. They like him there, and he's been there a couple of times. I saw him when he was premiering his film Seven Psychopaths, mm. and he does a lot of like dark comedy, like Irish dark comedy on stage also too like he's done a lot of broadway plays too yeah. and he's he's one and he's he's got that sort of dark sense of humor which and it's a movie great. that ends very open ended like you're not sure how exactly it ends i got to i got to rewatch but, it but um yeah it it is a dark if it, again another movie small budget small cast but it is it is really good if you guys like dark comedies or dark you know a little bit more serious films mm-hmm. that tackle some serious issues but like that is it is a film for you. It's called In Bruges. So I, I've got another one that I watched recently, and it's not a it's not necessarily a recent movie. Again, like In Bruges, but it's one that I haven't seen. The movie Soul. Have you seen it yet? The Pixar movie. Yeah, the Pixar movie. Yeah, we saw it. Oh yeah, I started watching it on a plane, and on the that's back. Where, that's where I watched Sonic oh, the really? Hedgehog too. On the back of a seat, and I'm like, I am not doing this film justice because it's so like the colors are so brilliant and the music is done by Trent Reznor from mm-hmm. Nine Inch Nails and I couldn't quite hear it so I'm like all right I got I've got ten minutes and I'm like all right I got to do this somewhere else so I finally rewatched the whole thing this past week good brilliant heart like it takes a lot of good chances and a lot of like thoughtful it, introspection it tack- Pixar I like Pixar because they tack they're not afraid to tackle the topics that kids should be learning about mm-hmm. and, and I'm not going to get too far into that that statement cuz you know obviously especially in America I know we have listeners from all over the world but in America the education system is is wild yeah. and it's con- it's very it's very scrutinized and there are attempts to modernize certain aspects there are attempts to keep it the same you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix. Blah 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 blah. But that—that's a whole other episode, and it's an episode that nobody will agree on completely, yeah. which sucks. That's the, w- the way our our culture is, unfortunately, right now. But I love Pixar because they always find a way to tackle certain aspects of our current culture, especially with such poise and dignity and respect on all aspects. Like even a movie like Toy Story three, which really tack like the ending of Toy Story three is rough. Yeah, like when they're all like about to die. Oh, it's, it's yeah, really a three hand. And that's kind of where, that's kind of where Pixar started with this whole hey, the kids can handle this, yeah. and the adults that are there were the ones that were watching Toy Story one and two when they that like Sean and I went to go see Toy Story three. I think we were in like Myrtle Beach or something like that, like on a like a friend vacation with yeah. a couple of other people, and we're like, we want to go see the movie. We ended up going to see it. We're like, it's like parents and kids, and then us. Yeah. But then there was like that's what we thought it was gonna be, and then. A bunch of other people our age came in to watch it. Well, that's like, you know, and they're, I like that they tackle stuff. Like, even the, I haven't seen it yet, their new one, Turning Red. Which I saw tack- Turning Red. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was which very it tackles good. essentially menstruation? Kind of, yeah. And they okay. mention it a lot. Really? Okay. Like, they mention puberty and they mention, okay, cool. you know, which is fine because, in all honesty, like, I don't have a daughter. I know, Rob, you don't have a daughter. And I'm sure having that conversation wouldn't be easy for us. Right. But, like, it's a conversation that needs to be done. Yeah. And, you know, ignoring it 
doesn't really work. I liked Soul. I didn't love Soul. It I, was. In, I haven't watched it since. I thought that like they they went with that old trope of you know so and so comes back but not in the body that they thought they were going to come back in. Like Brave did that. Yeah. And, and I'm like, ugh, when that happened because he comes back in the cat. But it actually it served a purpose for the story, so I was fine with it. Um, it, it, I thought it could have at times gone a little bit further. I say nothing. If nothing else, I recommend it for the visuals and Trent Reznor's score, which is so haunting and the, brilliant. The fourth dimensional visuals oh. are very interesting. Obviously, death and dying is one of the the oldest thought processes of you know people. Like what happens when you die? And it's funny. We just had a, we had a spirit medium on the show two weeks yes. ago, and Daniel, and he has such a a unique perspective about what happens when when you pass. Apparently, I've lived 26 lives. No big deal. Okay. Well, yeah. Also, did he tell you that? Yeah. How did he determine that? Because apparently, Daniel speaks to spirits. Okay. And they they communicate to him through a unique way that's to him. I don't want to spoil it if you guys haven't listened to the episode. Because it, it was a great episode, especially for me being the... I saw it was a long episode. It was too. a long yeah. episode. You got to... And Robbie, cool. I know that it just came out today, but you got to listen to the one Mel and I did last right. night. Because we tell a story about a lady we met on vacation yeah. in the same vein... And oh, it's, it's okay. wild. It's it's hilarious. The people you meet in Jamaica. <laughs> but anyway, like Soul was just visually, it was just so mm. interesting. And, and that that's really what caught me. But unfortunately with visuals, if the, like the storytelling was there, but it is a very Pixar storytelling. Like you kind of know the beats that it's going to yeah. go through. Unfortunately, that's what Pixar is now also known for. It's it's almost like a Marvel problem where you know how this story is going to go, but it's it's fun to watch it as it happens. Like for Soul, I again, I I watched it. I enjoyed it. The wife enjoyed it. We haven't watched it since. Yeah, that's not a movie we're ever gonna just put back on. Right. A little too deep and existential for us. Any other movies? I think that those are the two that I watched okay. most recently. I'll I'll just briefly mention like two more. One is called The Untouchables. It is a foreign film from 2011. It's like one of the highest grossing foreign films that's like foreign that's out there. It's about. It was actually remade in this here with Brian Cranston and Kevin Hart. Oh, I know I know this <laughs> yeah, movie, yeah. Where yeah. one of them is a he's completely paralyzed from the neck down and the other one is his reluctant caretaker. I don't want to watch the remake cuz I mm. can't imagine it's going to be any good, especially with Ke- like I like Kevin Hart. Yeah. But The Untouchables, you it sounds like oh god, that sounds so depressing. It was one of the most life-affirming and funniest movies I'd seen in a really really long time. Mm. I cannot recommend this one enough. It is Probably one of the best movies I've seen in the past five years, the the Intouchables. It is out there. I think you can watch it right now on. Oh, it's on Amazon. You can see it. It's a little. It might be a little hard to find. I watched it on the plane, and I'm like, this is amazing. I can't believe I haven't seen this since. And yeah. it's. I loved it. The other one was uh, actually another one I saw on a plane. <laughs> no sudden move. It's a Steven Soderbergh movie. It's from the past year. It came out during. It was supposed to be released, but then COVID hit, and the, so they decided to. Um, put it straight out to I think HBO Max it is a like 1940s kind of twisty caper kind of film noirish mm. Soderbergh has this amazing ability Don Cheadle, Don Cheadle Benicio Del Toro he's got this amazing ability to shoot quick movies and churn them around like he'll, he'll release like three or four movies a year which is crazy and and this is it was fun it was twisty it's very low-key don't expect a lot except for some great acting and a good script mm. all right tv tv all right so do you want to talk like current shows that we're watching or just to what, show them? whatever you want well producer melanie and i are about to finish supernatural oh so is this yeah. her first go round through it first go yeah. through but the shows that we i've been watching i watched the uh, the orville on Hulu. Mm-hmm. The Orville is like the Star Trek show from uh, Seth MacFarlane. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I remember watching, it was on Fox, like I think three, four years ago it came out. And everybody thought it was going to be like Family Guy in Space, but it actually was like a serious love letter and like a almost like more of an action dramatic with some comedy in it. Yeah. And I was blown away. I, I loved it. I, I fell in love with it. And then it got dropped by Fox, but picked up by Hulu and then COVID. So there's like two, three years between season two and three and it just came out on hulu and i watch it every week Mm. it's a show that i just thoroughly enjoy what about you michelle the best thing i'm watching right now and i'm i know i'm late to the party on this one ted lasso 
Ted Lasso. Yeah, yeah. I, I have I, I saw what it was, and I'm like, there's no way I'm going to like this. And we resisted watching it for years, you know, because it came out in 2020, and it's two seasons in. We just finished the first season. The reason we're watching is my wife's principal sent out an email to her to his staff this summer and said everyone needs to watch Ted Lasso before they come into school in September. And she's like, oh, I can't believe it. I'm like, let's just do it. Let's bite the bullet. We are shocked how much we love the show. I've heard very good things. Holy cow. And and if you know me, you know I am not for cookie cut trite comedy shows and it because that's what it looked like from the commercials. I'm like, this is this looks like a sitcom. My fat ass just heard cookie. <laughs> And it is so brilliant and rich and, and thoughtful with such amazing characters. My And my wife is even more cynical than I am. And she's like, I can't believe how much I love this show. Mm. So big shout out to Ted Lasso. Love it. I did just also finish this season of Holy Moly, which is my favorite. What is that? Holy Moly is... Oh, no. It's a, com- oh, no. It's a competitive... Yep miniature golf show and i love it i love it <laughs> so much because it's uh, it's basically wipe out with mini golf yeah. and a i just love physical comedy i love i hate to and say it i like love prattful physical comedy this is like, like getting hit by giant things and falling <laughs> into water and just like it, i love it and i it's just such a blast i didn't like this season as much because they tried to do a, a trope where they had the muppets on it it what? Was, it's ABC. It's all owned by Disney. That still doesn't excuse it. It was not good, and it was it was like very ham fisted. Because I guess the what issue, did the Muppets do? They had like a side, like a side story where the Muppets they were using the Muppets to try and save the show from getting canceled. Oh my god! And you could tell it was definitely <laughs> shot outside the show. And I think maybe the, maybe I think it might have had to do something with COVID, where mm-hmm. they needed something to kind of <clears throat> fill out the runtime because. It's funny, you watch the first season, or the first, I think this is the fourth season, you watch the first or second season, and like, you can tell the audience is there for the show, like they have signs for the show, like they have, they have like, the family members are there, kind of like American Ninja Warrior, little, the like pants of the yeah. family. Then I think COVID hit, and they film all these things all at once, especially yeah. for a show like that, it's much easier, and... I, I don't know. It's just it's very it was very strange this okay. season, but I still love just watching people get hit by giant windmills. <laughs> All right, I'll build on that. I, I've got a, a reality show, sure, reality show. Do you know who Nathan Fielder is? No. Okay, Nathan Fielder. He had a show years ago called Nathan for You. It was a reality show where he passed himself off as sort of a business consultant mm-hmm. that he would go to people with really 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 bad ideas to improve their sh- their business love it like he the, his big thing was he came up with a thing called dumb starbucks where it was the guy that had a, a a coffee place and he said we need to make people think they're coming into starbucks so we'll do use parody law and we'll call it dumb starbucks and people will show up thinking it's starbucks and they'll see that there's a little dumb next to it but that'll bring in the people and it, it's his it's cringe inducing so he's got this new show now on HBO Max called The Rehearsal. This is absolute what the fuck kind of reality. It's he it starts off where he places an his 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 I don't even know how to describe this. It's only 3 episodes in right now. He helps people by taking them through real world scenario problems that they have. And because his thought is if you rehearse how it's going to happen and think about all possible outcomes, Mm -hmm. you can perfect the way your situation is going to go. So the first guy he has is he's on a trivia team and he lied to his trivia team a few years ago that he has a master's degree. And he's like, I feel so guilty about this. So what he does is he's all right, I'm going to help you overcome this. He says, we're going to do it in this He says, where's a place where you usually do your trivia? And he says, there's a bar. Nathan Fielder does a complete recreation of the bar down to the smallest detail in a warehouse. That's awesome. And he has actors portraying the people that would be in the bar. And he has them go through all these possible scenario rehearsals of what it would be like to come out to his friend and say, hey, I don't actually have a master's degree. And Nathan Fielder is there with his laptop strapped to him with all of these bubble flow charts trying to figure out all the possible scenarios to help this guy. That's only the first episode. Second episode, then, he's trying to help someone who's in her mid-40s understand what it's like to raise a child so he hires child actors between the ages of zero and 16 and he changes the kid out every three days 
and this is a reality show. It is off the wall bonkers. I don't know where this show is going and and it's only three episodes in. So you got to get in on this because who knows, there might be a larger game at play with this show. So weird. It is. And Fielder is an, he is a genius and he is psychotic. He's a sociopath. It's a terrible combination. (laughs) So what I just, I don't like cringe humor. Yeah. I don't like cringy shows or things like that. The thing about this too is Nathan, Nathan for you was cringy. This is a show, I'm not sure if it's a comedy or not. Mm. It might be a thoughtful exploration of the human psyche, or it might be a complete setup. I have no idea. Either way. Like, that's why Ronnie loves Impractical Jokers. I can't watch it. No, I, I just, I don't like, I don't like the cringe, the embarrassment humor type yeah. stuff. Even like TV shows or movies, if there's like a scene that I know is going to be cringy or like embarrassing, I, I don't enjoy watching so it. So you're not a fan of The Office then? I've I've seen bits and pieces of the yeah, office. Yeah, you're like me then. Yeah, like, like that. that just wasn't for me. But like Melanie likes to show Pen Fifteen. I watched a couple episodes of Pen Fifteen. I I, I like I I get why she likes it because it's very relatable. Right. But like for me, I'm like I hate watching. Yeah, I felt the same, and I tapped out after a couple. I'm trying to think any other TV shows that I'm like really involved with. I I have I've been gaming, so like oh, okay. I haven't really been watching TV. Either. All right, I got one. This you ha- you have to watch this. This is blow I'm, your mind. I don't have to do anything. I'll you, make you. You're not my boss. Severance, Severance. It's with Adam Scott. Mm-hmm. I know uh, Adam Scott. Okay, he. It's on Apple TV. Um, Can't watch it. I don't have Apple TV. I didn't either, so I paid the $5. I'm not doing it. <laughs> Which is where I watched Ted Lasso, because that's also Apple TV. But I figure I can cancel at the end of the month, and it's $5 well spent. So it's less than lunch. It's not like Netflix, where they're like, oh, oh my gosh. Yeah, oh, you want to watch all the Stranger Things? Well, the next two episodes come out in exactly 31 days. Mm. So Severance, I won't, I won't give too much away about this. It takes place in a it, it sort of retro future world. Okay. It's timeless, but it's definitely something future. And the idea is that they figured out that you they can insert this implant into your brain and it separates your work self from your outside of work self. Okay. They call them innies and outies. And so the so when you walk out of think about it this way, if you were to show up at work, your brain shuts off. And you are now this other personality and you don't remember anything about home life. Then when you're at work, you, that's your person. You don't know what your home life is like. You know nothing else outside of work. And then when you leave work, that personality shuts off and you become this other person. So it's or, sort of like you never have to work in life, huh. but your work any always works. Okay. And... So it's about the innies of these four workers with Adam Scott. And it's it's not... There are there are funny things in this. Don't get me wrong, but it's so twisty, and there's so many like plot twists to it, and so many like interesting things as to who their outer lives are and how it plays into their inner lives. And oh, and Christopher Walken is in it too, oh. and John Turturro. Have you ever worked in an office? Not really. It is for you office people that have ever worked in an office. It is brilliant satire. Like they, their job in the office is they have a computer where they look at spreadsheets of numbers and they have to find the scary looking numbers and then they have to group those and they don't really know what they're doing for a job or anything. And then like after they reach certain quotas, they get like for, if they reach 25% of their quota, they get a finger 50% of their quota. They get a caricature of themselves. It's like sort of, and you know, you probably know this just from working in the schools too. the, the little incentives that they give you that are so meaningless. We're going to have a pizza party. What yeah. <laughs> stuff like that. They have a waffle party on the show. It is. I'd actually be okay with the waffle party. Yeah, it is hysterical the little stupid incentives that they give these office workers for me to think quota severance is one of the best shows of that's come out in the past year i can't recommend severance enough we were completely blown away and there's that guess it, it ends on a cliffhanger so there's going to be a second season maybe yeah uh, it's up for a ton of emmys too oh nice yeah. nice all right, so let's move on to what are you i got one more thing oh my god sorry television you made it seem like we were to do one each <laughs> You made oh, it seem like one I? each. Oh, I'm sorry. That's what you implied. One more television. Succession. Are you familiar with it? I've heard of it. I haven't seen it. I binge watched all three seasons. Can't, I can't it binge watch. It is probably the best show that has ever been on television. I really, Seriously. Obviously, you've not seen the masterpiece that is Birds of Prey. On I the, have on, seen Birds of On WB. Oh, masterpiece. oh the, yes, I know that one. Yeah. Succession is 
brilliant Shakespearean drama on a corporate level. Go watch it. It is incredible. I was hooked for all three seasons. I, could, I couldn't, like, I would end watching it the night and I couldn't go to sleep because I was so anxious. It is such a good show. I don't know show. if I want that in my life. Oh, my God. It I was, have enough trouble sleeping. It's so amazing. All right. Go ahead. All right. So what are you reading? What am I reading? I'm right now in the middle of reading. Okay. Now, you would appreciate this because I know you you know this a little. You have some Greek mythology mm-hmm. that you like to look at. I'm reading a book called Circe by Madeline Miller where it's the character of Circe. Are you familiar I with? I know who Circe oh, is. You know who Circe is. So, so I like those, bacon, so. She create didn't she create like people into pigs or something like that? Oh yes, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow, all right. You yeah. do know who yeah, Cersei is. Nice. You can get out of here. So yeah, Cersei. For you, the, as Paul mentioned, she uh, lives on an island by herself, and she uh, turns people into pigs. And she was banished there, and she runs into Odysseus. And this is sort of like Cersei, like how she got there, how she runs into Odysseus, her life, all these gods that she runs into. It's actually a really good, interesting, thoughtful book. I really into it. I, I actually put it on my student reading list this summer knowing that it was good mm-hmm. and then taking a chance and now I'm reading it for September so I'm, I'm be interested to talk with those who read it uh, for my class I think uh, producer Melanie might be interested yeah. so for me I'm reading The Last Witch The Last Wish which is part of the Witcher series ah yeah so that that's what I picked up because uh, we went to a bookstore where were we uh, and our, on one of our last shows, I think in Myrtle Beach. Mm-hmm. And whenever Mel and I go to a bookstore on vacation, a we always have to try and go to a bookstore sure. on vacation, with the exception of our honeymoon last week, because mm-hmm. you don't want. I don't want to go to a Jamaican bookstore, <laughs> but um, I wanted to just eat and enjoy. I and just, what, like, now I need to go to a Jamaican bookstore because I need to know what it looks like. I just want to lay down the whole trip. I just want to relax. But so whenever we, uh, whenever we go away, we try and find a local bookstore, and we always try and find a book, mm-hmm. usually for her. She always ends up leaving with a book. Usually, sometimes I'll get one, but I saw the Witcher series there. I was like, you know what? I really want to read it. So I just grabbed one. And I was like, all right, let's see how – it's weird reading the book series after seeing the show because now you kind of see like where certain things came from, the ideas. So I am I'm, – I'm enjoying it so far. Mm-hmm. And it's it, – I think it's easier since I did see the show. It's easier for me to visualize okay. just because I, I used to read so avidly and now – like I, I read all the Harry Potter books. Yeah. I could – when I first started reading them, I could read each one in a day. Like, like that's how fast I can, I, I was I, able to read. Now, I what are your reading habits like? A non-existent right now. Yeah. No. I, I I cannot sit for that long. So what I do is I regulate myself to fifty pages a day mm-hmm. of whatever I'm reading. So that way, I, I usually finish a book a week. Yeah. I but like I said, for Harry Potter, when that when those came out, I was able to read a book a day, and like I could just power read i could stay up i was able to stay up late because i think when deathly hollows came out like i remember i went to the midnight premiere oh wow they did they had like that was when like harry potter peak harry potter like the last book was coming out nobody wanted to be spoiled blah blah Mm -hmm. blah the kmart in town i you know you remember remember of course i remember kmart i had i I know the kmart you're talking about actually had a midnight release and i was like i'm gonna get there wow i got there at like 11 45 not a soul there and just the people that were working there, just like miserable that they had to be there. Why was nobody there? Because nobody thought to go to Kmart to get a book. Oh, that's true. We were all at like Barnes and Noble. Barnes and, and Noble. Borders. So and... I managed, not only did I manage to get my own copy, like right then, they gave it to me earlier. They're like, just take it. So you might have been the first person to get a copy. It may be possible. I don't want to, I don't want to <laughs> submit to that claim without any proof. But yeah, though, that, that book is a book that, that I, I died to get to and I loved it and I read it. And I remember reading it to like four o'clock in the morning that night. Sleeping for like three, four hours, and then starting right back up in the morning. Yeah, yeah. I just finished reading. I, you might have either read this or seen the movie. This has been on my shelf for years, and I finally just got to it. Life of Pi. I, I've I've seen bits and pieces of the movie. Yeah, I the book blew me away. Mm-hmm. I couldn't believe it. It was it, it's a story about a boy who he owns a sixteen year old boy. He and his family own a zoo. They sell the zoo and they're transporting a lot of the animals over to the Americas from India and their ship gets lost at sea and he gets stuck on a lifeboat with a tiger. And it is, you think it's one thing when you're reading it and then at the end it completely shifts everything and you're not sure what to believe, but it's all, it's a story that's all about belief, how we choose to believe things, the faith leaps that we take. And I have to say, I finished it like a week ago and I cannot get it out of my head. Hmm. It is, I highly recommend Life of Pi. Again, my fat ass is just like, is there pie? So what's on your bookshelf now? 
I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't have a bookshelf. I, this well, is, I, what's on your virtual bookshelf? That you're, I don't have that. E- you, I am the worst person for you to try and do this with because I don't read. I don't I actively read. Get Melanie read. on the show for this. Get Melanie on the show yeah. for this. Yeah. I. Again, this was not something that I am not the ideal person yeah. to discuss with this because I don't have a bookshelf. If I see a book that looks interesting, I'll grab it. I have books upstairs, but I'm, nothing's really. Okay. I'm calling you. I've got more things to do. You're you're, you're the gamer. I'm the gamer. Yeah. I'm, I do all the podcast stuff. You know, I this summer's been weird with work where I've been working and then not working and yeah. working and then not working. So, yeah, no, I don't have a virtual I, uh, bookshelf or a I, bookshelf. I, I, when you're hearing this podcast, I'll be on vacation. So, I actually, just last night, I went through my books and I'm like, all right, what do I want to bring on vacation? So, I, I picked two books. I picked Kurt Vonnegut's Mother Night, which I never read. He wrote Slaughterhouse Five. Kurt Vonnegut's one of my favorite authors. Mm-hmm. And, and I've read that Mother Night's one of his masterpieces. And I pulled Psycho, I'm going to read, which I've never read. I've seen the movie for huge movie. Patrick Bateman. Is it Patrick? Patrick Bateman, yeah. Bateman fans. And I've never read the book. So it's the I'm only gonna... Jared Leto movie you probably like. Oh, man. Does he get killed in that? Yeah, viciously. Is he the one that gets axed on yeah. the sofa? When it's set to be square. Oh, that's mm-hmm. awesome. I didn't... And his name's I, Paul. I don't think I realized that was Jared Leto. Yeah. Because okay. he's normal-ish. <laughs> Or as normal as it goes in that uh, movie, that movie's wild. I, I love I, that movie. I, I met Mary Heron, who directed that movie, and we got to talk. I, you know, it was in a group, and we got to talk to her about like the film and like her other stuff and everything. And she's so brilliant. I like any story that, like, at the end of it, you, you second guess the yeah. whole thing. Another one is a Shutter Island. Yep, Shutter Island. I read the book. I read that book. Yeah. After I saw, I think I saw read it. Maybe I read it before I saw the movie. Okay, I, it, I I refused to watch the movie until I read the book. Yeah, because I, I I think that the, I think that the movie is a very good representation of the book, and yeah, I think is. that they managed to do a lot of good stuff with it. Scorsese's good at that stuff. Yeah, yeah. The, the ending I think was done a li- slightly better in the book, mm-hmm. just because you can hear the thoughts of the characters. Yeah, but like I still say that that is one of the few movie to book adaptations or book to movie adaptations that right. actually like holds up really well. Yeah. All right, last question, and you know let's let's try and keep it to. You know, not 92 different drinks, Rob. <laughs> what? I don't know. What are you drinking? So I'm poor right now. First of all, because teachers, we get this huge check in June and then we don't get anything again until September. So we have to like eke it out. So we, we, we were on a budget. And also I just bought, I just bought a BMW. It's used. Tell, tell, tell me you're poor again. Really it's quick. used. It's a 2018 BMW. And so we like don't have... And also, like the pool, we had a pool disaster where we lost a lot of money. You'd, I didn't sell you this. My dog Finn just had two, dental surgery yesterday. Oh God. Thirteen hundred dollars because he had a bad cracked tooth. So with not having a lot of money, I'm sticking a lot to Bud Light. No, I'm sorry, I, I splurged Bud Platinum. Oh, good. I love I love a Bud. Uh, Platinums are good. And Lauren then splurged on those little. Um, Bud Limes. Oh, okay. The the so, seltzers? Or, yeah, uh, yeah. No, no. The actual drinks? I yeah. do not get the hard seltzer craze. I I don't enjoy them. I'd rather just have a beer. I think people enjoy them because they're, they're, they're less calories. They're strong. They are strong, but they're so, like, tasteless. Yeah, I'm not a big fan. No. I don't, I don't, like, I don't like seltzers to begin with. See, that's all we drink in our house, yeah. and I hate hard seltzer. Yeah, no thank you. Give me my beer. Give me my, my drink yeah. drink. Um, but I do have – I just finished – let's see – I had a little bit left in my uh, what's the vodka the really good uh, not absolute I forget what oh. <laughs> and I have a a bourbon that I'm working on at home too there you go well, how about you all now, right now so- you just to preface this Paul just came back from his honeymoon so I am really excited to hear what are you drinking so I'm I'm actually looking it up so I can tell you guys. <laughs> Oh, so, Sky Vodka, that's what it was. Basically, my wife and I had our honeymoon, and we we went to Sandals, because we wanted something that was completely all-inclusive, that we didn't have to worry about anything, that we can literally just enjoy, and that's that. So when you go to those places, they have they have your typical beer, your wine, your whatever. They also have their mixed drinks. And I'm assuming this is all, like, inclusive. All-inclusive. Like, yeah. you don't have to pay, you know, tips, no nothing. Everything's included. Not even tips. Right? Tips are included in your pricing, they say. And there, some of them will actually have pins that say, your gratitude is all I need, no tipping. Okay. Like, it, it, was in, it was very interesting because I remember as a kid, like, I went to beaches or sandals, whatever it was. But, like, that was never – I was a kid. It was I a different have, experience. I just wanted 42 different sodas <laughs> all, at, all at once. But so 
I wanted to try different things because obviously I could have just had beer, but like yeah. the amount we were drinking, if I had had that much beer, I would have been just miserable. Oh, yeah. Just because yeah, as much you up. it fills you up. And also like we started drinking at like 11 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> like there, there was, I think the last full day we were there, we were doing shots with people at like 1030, 11 o'clock and just because the bar opens at 1030. And our last day, we're like, we want to just, we're like, we're not going anywhere, not doing anything. Let's, we'll get drunk now, and then yeah. we'll go to sleep early. And that that mostly worked out. But so I fell in love with a drink called a Caribbean Blue, and it's very simple. It's coconut rum, blue carousel, a little lemon juice, Sprite, and I think something else. But like, it's super simple, okay. and which is funny because I don't All drink, right, I don't drink it. soda. So this was a big departure for me. But it, it was sweet. It was simple. Did they light yours on fire? No, they didn't light it on okay. fire. It was it wasn't that strong. But that's also the other thing. They definitely watered down their drinks. Mm-hmm. Like Melanie, I think Melanie got like drunk drunk once, but that was a lot of shots. For the most part, I just kept a good buzz going the entire time and this was a good way to do it. But I'll tell you a quick story about one of the drinks we did. Mm-hmm. So we were at the the pool bar. They have pool bars at these resorts are split up into like a swim up area and then an actual bar area. So there was a group of people at the bar area. They had just gotten there. They all just met there. They they didn't know each other. They didn't come together. And one of the guys heard about a drink there called a excuse me a jellyfish shot. Now the jellyfish shot is a okay. It's a layered shot where basically it's like three different layers, and because of the way you pour it in the middle, all right, I'm looking it, at a picture of in it. In the yeah. middle, it looks like a swirling jellyfish. Now, these drinks are not like a shot of vodka where you just pour it and go. It, it takes time. It takes... Is it a blue jellyfish? No. No, it doesn't have to be blue. It doesn't okay. have to be blue. Because I see that's uck type. Yeah. All right. But it's like a, a, a creamy, like a Bailey's type drink, which I love. And so oh, I see this that. poor bartender... Oh, gosh. Wow. Yeah, this poor bartender had to make... like Because like, when you're at the bar at one of these resorts... Yeah, oh, yeah, Rob's looking at like an actual like video of this. It is wild oh, wow. the way they do this. But that's so cool. Yeah, it takes time though, and you have to do it right. Oh, I'm watching how long it's taken this guy to make this drink. Yeah. Yes. So this poor bartender, who they actually called over to make it because like it's his specialty. Yeah. Of course, when you're at the pool bar, you start making friends with everybody. We didn't know these people, and they're like, "Yo, you guys want to do a shot with us? Sure. Yo, you guys want to do it?" Sh-? This poor guy did like 25 of these shots. Oh my god! It took almost a f- like 35 minutes to get them all done. In that time, we could have done so much more, but like that's like our drink story because oh, that was just yeah. Oh, that's really cool shot. It, I, did it taste good? I I enjoyed it. Like mm-hmm. I said, I like Bailey's. I like you know those kind of liquors. Melanie was like kind of mad about it because it's not really for her. So I I enjoyed. Melanie was also doing shots of Terramana tequila on Thursday morning. <laughs> like Thursday morning. Oh my god! I don't know how she did it. It was it was rough. There were some rough rough days, but also the cool thing about the bartenders there were. Like you could order any, they'll make you something. Like if mm-hmm. you're like, hey, I really like vodka, surprise me. They're like, we got you, we got you, man. Okay. Yeah. How now? I gotta ask this question. How are you? At what point do you start to get sleepy from drinking? It depends. Because you are you. I've got 15 years on you, and it's a problem for me. For me, it depends on what we did during the day. It depends on how active we were. It depends yeah. on when we started drinking. It depends on if we stopped drinking. I find that if you stop drinking, I get tired. Then that's Maybe when my that's body what, starts yeah. to like. Okay, you're done. No, 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 no. Maybe that's what's going on with Um, me. And again, it all depends on what we're doing and where we are and, you know, if I wanted to even go out. Like, it's... At this point, drinking has, like, factors to it that you have to accommodate (laughs) for as you get older. Like, it's it's so weird. Like, when you're 21, 22, like, you're just like, boom, let's go. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. We can still go out. Where are we going next? And now it's like, I have a drink at, like, 1 in the afternoon and I need a nap. I don't day drink. <laughs> I am not a day drinker. I know Ronnie's Ronnie can do it. Really? And I think Sean can, too. Mm. But, when, like, we would go – we went to Myrtle Beach. It was, like, me, Ronnie, Sean, and our friend Brendan. And they would day drink where I, where I was, like, I'm going to sleep in. Then I'm going to go to the gym. And it's, like, 11 o'clock. They're doing drinks. And I'm, like, I can't. Yeah. I'm not a big day drinker. That's just me. I, I, I find that, yeah, if I'm going to – I find that if I'm going to have a drink, a drink – I need to make sure my afternoon is cleared Mm. because like if, you know, if I'm going kickboxing or if I'm I'm visiting someone or I'm going to watch a movie, I I won't drink because I know I'm going to fall asleep halfway through whatever it is that I'm doing. That's fair. (laughs) All right. So that's going to wrap us up for today for what you're doing or what you're up to. I'll think of some sort of fun, plucky title for this. Watching, reading, drinking. No, no, no. no, no, It kind of locks us in. Yeah. Yeah. Because what if next week we want to do or next month we want to do. What are you wearing? No, no, we can't do that. That one we can't do. 
Because it's not a video podcast. I can just make something up. <laughs> People will be like, oh, he, he, he sits there in a green arrow costume that whole time? <laughs> That's weird. I don't even hear the leather. But we'll, uh, we'll, we'll think of something. I'll think of a name for this. But uh, yeah, that's going to wrap us up for today. Thank you, Rob, for, for joining Thanks me. Thanks for having me. I didn't really want you. But <laughs> don't forget more of our content, MisfitFaction.com. You can also find us on all social medias, including Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook. Just type in the Misfit Faction. Odds are you'll find some of our content. And also I wanted to add, if you want to follow me on Goodreads, you can search my last name, Loalbo, L-O-A-L-B-O, and you can follow what I'm reading and what I've read and what I've rated. You can also find me on Letterboxd, which is my movie viewing. Feel free to friend me on there. It's R-M Loalbo, R-M-L-O-A-L-B-O. I'd love to see what you're watching and reading and vice versa. I think you're friends with my wife on Goodreads, right? I am. I yeah. actually get emails to see what she's reading all of the time. Of course. And I think she's lying half the time. <laughs> But uh, that's going to wrap us up for today. As always, I'm Paul. And I'm Rob. And we'll see you guys next time.